Hello students and welcome to another calculus video. In this video we're going to start looking at how we can apply the second fundamental theorem of calculus in some graphical problems. So let's get started. So in this problem we're given um, a function right and the function is defined using a definite integral and we're also given a graph that's here. And this graph is going to represent a g of t. So what we want to do is find the value of f of 0. So if I want to do f of 0, notice here I'm just going to put in negative 4 to 2 times 0, which is going to be 0, so negative 4 to 0, and then um, a g of t dt, because that's not x, so I'm not going to substitute in a 0 here. Okay, so this is g of t. This is my function. The graph is g of t. So really, okay, I want to get the area from negative 4 to 0. This is where it comes in useful. Okay, so I've got a rectangle here and then these two triangles. Well, first thing I notice is that those two triangles cancel each other out. So I'm only going to be focusing on this region and this region here. So I'm going to say, all right, f of zero is going to equal, well, the area of that base is going to be two and the height is one. And then I'm going to add it to pi r squared and the radius is going to be two of that circle. So then it's going to be pi r squared where r is two. And then I'm going to have to divide it by four because I'm only wanting that quarter circle. So we simplify this It's going to be two plus that's going to be uh, four pi over four. Those divide out. So I get two plus pi. And that's essentially like, okay, if it says, all right, just get me f of zero, f of three, or in the next question, f of two, you just substitute the values and you go from there like what we've been doing. All right, so now kind of following that same vein, go ahead and find the value of f of two. All right, and that is going to get me f of two. Again, I substituted in the two, so two times x gets me four, or sorry, two times two gets me four. And then I'm go I, I read my integral, and it says, all right, the lower bound is negative four to positive four. So as I'm looking at this, all right, so everything in here is really what I want because the other two regions are canceling out on the left from negative four to negative two, and then on the right from two to four. So as I, as I look at it, I'm taking my last answer and I'm doubling it because they have symmetry across that y axis. So all I have to do is just multiply by two and I get four plus two pi. So now let's look at problem number three. We want to find the value of f prime. Well, we kind of just did this in the last video of, all right, if I'm looking for the derivative of a function that's defined as an integral, all I have to do is I have to state substituting in that composition of functions and then multiply by that derivative. So let's write it out. Let's figure out, okay, what is f prime of x going to be? Well, I'm going to substitute in 2x to my function. So that's going to say g of 2x. And then I'll multiply by the derivative of 2x, which is 2. So f prime of x is going to be 2g of 2x. Now, all right, we want to find f prime of 1. So f prime of 1 is going to get me 2 times g and then g or 2 times 1 is 2. So I want g of 2. So I'm looking up here at my graph and I'm going to get g of 2 real quick and I'm looking here at g of 2 and this is going to say 1 so g of 2 is equal to 1 so this is going to be 2 times 1 which gets me 2 so f prime of 1 equals 2 and you're going to follow that same kind of format as you come over here and you work on finding the value of f prime of negative 2 so let's go ahead and do that All right, so I found f prime of negative two comes out to be equal to negative two. All you have to do again is figure out, substitute in that negative two, two times negative two got me negative four, and then you just get the value from the graph of g of t, and that's where I got a negative one from. So g of negative four is negative one, multiply that by two. Now we wanna find the second derivative of f at two. All right, so let's, let's kind of write down, okay, we know what f prime of x is, right? We know that f prime of x is 2g of 2x. So now what I want to do is I want to take that derivative. So what is the derivative of this? Well, we are going to need a chain rule. We have a constant multiple, so 
g prime of 2x times the derivative of the inside, which is times 2. So this comes out to be, let me write it over there, 4 g prime of 2x. So now I want to substitute in the 2. So second derivative of f at 2 is going to be 4 g prime of 2 times 2. So that's going to be 4. All right, so let's figure out what g prime of 4 is. So let me look here. And this at 4, g of 4, g prime of 4, you need to be very careful here because you're looking at it and it's just like, all right, I'm looking right there at that point and it is on a slope. But remember, derivatives need to come from both directions. You cannot have a derivative at an endpoint. So if we were looking for g prime of 3, we'd be able to do it. 3.1, 3.99, we'd be able to do it. But g prime of 4, we cannot solve for because it gets, it's an endpoint and we don't have that, that limit from the other direction. So it actually comes out to be undefined. And the reason it's undefined is because g prime of four does not exist because g of t at four is not continuous. Okay, so what I want us to do here in our next problem is I want you to go ahead, give it a shot yourself, all right? Um, get through all these problems and we're gonna come and we're gonna discuss all these parts in just a minute. So I'll see you in a bit. Okay, so let's discuss these problems. And this first one, as we're going from uh, finding g of negative six, what I started was, um, I didn't want to do this backwards, um, negative one to negative six, so I flipped the integrals, um, and I went from negative six to negative one, but I made the integral negative. After that, it's just finding the area between the curve and the x-axis. Remember, if it's below the x-axis, it will be subtracted, so negative. So I get negative and then four minus one minus four, which comes out to be positive one. And a very similar thing in our next one, um, we're going from negative one to six this time, we end up with a quarter of a circle. So I divide by four. And then again, everything below the x-axis is negative, everything above the x-axis is positive. So I end up with negative eight plus pi. Now looking at number three, now we're looking at derivatives again. So I started by finding, all right, what is the derivative here of g of x? And so I noticed that we're going from negative one to x. And so the derivative of x is one. It really doesn't change too much. I'm really just left with f of x. All right, so I know g prime of x equals f of x and g prime of six comes out to be two because you just grab the six. All right, look at the six here. All right, I'm looking at it. And then what is the y value? The y value is two. That's all you got to do there. And I do a very similar thing with g prime of two. G prime of two, what is the y value? That's negative two. And that's exactly what the answer comes out to be. Now in the last two questions, g double prime of two, we want to say what it is. And looking at g double prime of two, I know f prime of two is what I want to be figuring out. So as I looked at f prime of two, I saw that it was coming in at a corner or a cusp. And since I have a slope on the left side that's not equal to the slope on the right side, I can't say because we're looking at limits. Remember, derivatives and limits are connected. That I, I cannot say that they are equal to one thing because the left-hand side does not equal the right-hand side limit. So uh, since that is happening, it is undefined because again, f of t has a corner at t equals two. And a very similar thing in our final problem, the second derivative of g of negative four, we knew that's gonna be f prime of negative four. So I looked at negative four and that's on a linear path. So I can find it since it's in the middle, right? It's not an endpoint 
or at a corner so I can find the derivative. I can find the slope there. That slope comes out to be down two over one. So that's going to be negative two. I didn't, that's how I figure out the second derivative of negative four, which is negative two. So we know that the slope of f of t at t equals negative four is going to be negative two because we found what the slope of f was. So you again want to make connections. All right, what if it will ask me, what is the behavior of g of x um, at negative four? Well, we would say it is uh, concave down, or we could say that it's decreasing. We could say that it's a uh, maximum or minimum. So you want to make those connections as we're moving forward here about what, what are these connections between g and then f of x and then putting one inside of the other. And the more practice you get doing that, the more solid your understanding of calculus is going to become. So hopefully you got all that. Of course, if you didn't get any of these answers, you reach out to me so I can explain it again. Maybe I made a mistake. Maybe I, you're interpreting something incorrectly. Again, this is our final module and your AP calculus exam is right around the corner. So thank you everybody. I'm Mr. Hernandez and this was Mr. Hernandez Teaches.